Hi there, it's Mike here from Twenty Road, and welcome to this video on searching in Birds Nest Explorer. Now, when you log in uh, to the Birds Nest Explorer console, uh, you'll come to the portal and you can open the visualizer, and this is where you're going to be doing most of your searching and discovery work. Now, up in the top left hand corner here, you will have the search button. Don't be confused with this uh, search icon down here. This is all of these controls are related to the uh, data that is currently in the view so searching with it within the nodes that are already existing within the view this is for searching the database to add new items to the view so when you click on the search icon you'll get the simple search mode and in here you can enter in any sort of random search term and it will try and auto complete for you and if we let's, let's do search for demo user 395 and you can either add all of those 11 results to the view or you can click on the 11 and just click add the specific item or items to the view that you want to now when you're doing a simple search what you're searching against is this name item here that becomes at the bottom of the node this is the equivalent of the name property that you see up here um, also listed down here in the full properties list. Now if you want to search for one of these other properties then you need to use the advanced search mode. So if we click on the expand icon here that takes us to the advanced search mode. Now if we actually think about the results we're trying to get back, so if we add another item in, so this uh, item is related to that AD group. Let's just recenter our view. And what we can see here is we have our the circle icons, which are our nodes, and then we have our relationships, uh, also known as hops. So this is one hop from here to here. Now in our advanced search mode, it is uh, intended to replicate this visual layout that you're seeing here except it's in a bit more of a vertical view so if we think about it like this if we add a couple of items so we've got two items here so we'll add two new nodes and you can see here we've got the round sided icons here which represent the round items and the straight sided icons here which represent the straight parts or the relationships between the nodes so if we wanted to search for these two particular items in this um, in this view from the advanced search, we could click on the item and we could either click on the edit icon here or we can double click the node. We can specify the type of node that we're looking for, in this case it's an AD user, and just save that or we can save and add a condition. Uh, we want to add a condition. So in this case let's search for the user principal name. So we're node one, so node one is just a, um, a random reference to identify it within the search, so that is node one, so node one where the user principal name is equal to that. Whether or not that search is case sensitive and we can also set it starts with, ends with, contains um, or we can inverse the search the, or the condition. And if we add this group in, so if node 2, that's of type AD group, and we'll just wear the SAM account name, which is the equivalent of the name. There it is, SAM account name is demo group 117 save if we clear this view and we do our search get two results add them to the view and there are our two items back now say we want to know all of the groups that this user is related to not just uh, directly so not just the direct memberships but also the indirect relationship. So what other groups is this AD group a member of or any other groups this happens to be a member of? So 
in that case we don't actually care what this group this node 2 is so we'll remove this condition and we want to know a multiple relationship type of result so if we look here we've got this 1 comma 1 so what does that mean a 1 dot dot 1 so that is relating to the the 1 there and the one there are related to the minimum and maximum number of hops uh, that we're searching for in this particular case. Now it, by default it's limited to one hop and that's done for performance reasons. Um, the more hops you have obviously the longer the search can take. So if we were to say where the where hop one what we are interested in is all of the AD member of relationships to get from node one to node two, so all of the groups with an AD member of type relationship, but we don't care how many hops it takes to get to that group. So let's uncheck that and click save. And then let's see what sort of result we get. And we get 28 results back. So let's add those to the view and we'll minimize our view so we can see a bit better. And here's all of the groups that come back. And you can see here we've got a quite a deep chain here from that group to that group all the way down to these groups. And this one here, the orange AD member of compared to the green, means that that's actually in a foreign domain. So that's um, a membership that comes from a domain trust. So here we've got a pretty good view of the groups that that, member, uh, that user is a member of and how those memberships come about. Now say we want to take it one step further and what we actually want to know is, okay, we have all these groups, what file system folders do those groups give us access to? So if we come back to our advanced search, let's clear this view for a minute. And we want to know, okay, that user as a member of these groups, okay, what groups have access to folders? So let's add another item, and we want that item to be of type file system folder. Save. And let's just search that and see what comes back. And we only get nine results back, so let's see what those are. And it's actually the result of that really long chain. So if we have a look here, that's a member of that, which is a member of that, etc, etc, all the way down. And what we actually have, which is kind of interesting, is that this group sets a permission on this folder here. Now this folder has inheritance blocked up to this folder, uh, but this user still has a permission via this group to there. So we've kind of got this square shaped relationship going on. This is actually a subfolder of that. So in this way we can see uh, what users or what this user has access to and how. We could potentially go another way and just say, okay, show me every user that has access to this folder. So let's actually do this, do this search. Uh, we don't care what the username is anymore, so let's remove that. But we do care about this file system folder so we want to add a condition where the path is equal to now that folder is called restricted so let's see what we can find there it is save now let's do a search now this might come back with quite a large group of users so this may not be a practical thing to look at but we'll see what comes back and that's not too bad. If you get results that get up towards the over a thousand users, the view tends to become very cluttered and hard to use. Um, but 200 users is generally fine, or 230 users. It's not really a problem. And that's going to update the view. So we can have a look at some of these groups. We can see how many users roughly are in each one relative to each other. And we can see all the different types of 
mapping. Now, say you've found this and you think it's quite interesting and you want to share it with someone else who's got access to Bird's Nest Explorer. So what you can do is a couple of things. If you click on the share search, now first of all uh, there is this URL and basically this has an encoded version of the search in the URL. So if you copy and paste this, uh, don't copy this just this text because it doesn't include all of it. So if you copy that link, email that to someone who has access to Business Explorer, they can log in um, and see that search and run it and get the results back. The other thing you can potentially do is down here, this is the Cypher query uh, that's used to run this search. Now Cypher is the query language for Neo4j, which is the database for Business Explorer. So if you wanted to use the search on a regular basis and you wanted to add it as a report to the Birds Nest Explorer console, you could use this as the basis um, for creating a plugin for your organization and create a, a report using this query um, so that you can just go into the console, click the report, it will run this, um, this query and get the results back and display them for you. So those can be quite useful for you. Now just one quick other note, this is not directly um, related to searching, but say what you actually wanted to know was who are the users that have access to this particular folder. So actually what you want out is just this user list. So what we can do, if we click on the I icon here, well, there's a couple of ways you can do it, actually. If you just want to export this entire view, you can export that to the report view. And that will export all of the information of the nodes out to the report viewer. And then you can download that as a CSV file, which you can open in Excel, filter out the things you don't want, so all the AD groups, etc., and go from there. If you actually want to remove everything from this view other than the users what you can do is use this eye icon down here now what we want to do is hide all of the AD users so if we click on this one we do this now what that does is that will stop all of the AD users when they're hidden you won't be able to select them now that means we can either use the select tool here to select everything in the view or if that's a little bit unwieldy uh, you can just use the inverse selection and it will just select everything that's not selected. So that's selected everything apart from the AD users and then we can click delete and that's deleted everything apart from the AD users and again we can come back in here and show everything again and that's what we're left with. Now when you do an export, you'll just have the AD users and then you can download that as a CSV after adding whatever other properties to this, to this view that you want. So I just thought I'd quickly mention that even though it's not directly related to searching, it's one thing to be able to search the data um, but then being able to get the data out to do other things as so you can send the spreadsheet off to another set of users for doing cleanup work. Um, etc. Uh, that's a way of doing that. So this has been a quick overview of Business Explorer searching and some of the things you can um, search for, how to search for them. Um, you can get quite advanced with these, you can specify different types of relationships uh, in these gaps, you can get really specific or you can leave it fairly open. The main thing um, to keep an eye on is just the number of results that come back um, because the view has a, a limited amount of um, space and if you add too many items to the view not only will it become quite cluttered um, and be hard to follow um, but also the view will start to slow down once you get above about 1500 nodes um, the, the view gets quite slow and hard to deal with um, but in saying that I have had up to 3000 on there and it's been somewhat usable so that's searching. Uh, if you've got any queries, there'll be a, um, a link down below to the documentation. Um, and if you have any queries beyond that, uh, feel 
free to reach out via the 20road.com website. Thanks very much and have a great day.